Hi, I'm Mr. Biotech of SkinYourScreen.com, and this is the second part of a tutorial where we're trying to emulate this card being inserted using Photoshop version CS3. So in the first part, we took everything about up to this level where we generated uh, two vertical lines, added some gradients to these that were reflected, and then added a specular highlight on this side as well as a punch through on this side. So this is the specific example that we were doing. Uh, now we want to add a card, and in order to do that, I'm going to create a new layer and call this card. Again, really creative, I recognize. And if you go to your rectangle tool, now I'm going to select a, let's get kind of a papyrus looking color. I want something brown, orangish, a little bit less saturated, maybe more towards the yellow. There we go. And I'm just going to arbitrarily draw a rectangle here. So that looks good to me. If you want to, you can kind of jiggle it around, move it. What I like to do, just to give it a little bit more flavor, is to do a transform on it, specifically a rotation. And I'm just going to tweak it just a couple degrees. In this case, I'm doing 3.7. We can make it an even 4 if we want, just for visual appeal. And if you hit Enter, it will accept that. And so there's our card you can see. Now if I click on this little gray box, this has all the, um, the vector information. So this, this layer is actually composed of vector information that says draw this rectangle and then this part says fill it with this color. So this is very different than a regular bitmap. So when we made our, our specular highlights beneath it, these were raster or bitmap information, meaning that each pixel is assigned a particular color. However, this thing is a vector, meaning it's represented by an equation in the computer as opposed to pixel x1, uh, y2 is yellow. Uh, so we can, this, these are a little bit more malleable. We can do a lot of stuff with it that you can't do with raster layers. But the first thing we want to do, of course, is get rid of this half. So ideally, this thing should be poking out like that. So how are we going to do that? Well, if we select the rectangle tool again, and make sure that this part is selected. You should see the, the outline of the card like that. If we use the subtraction method and we draw another rectangle, we'll see that it kills what was there previously. So let me zoom up on this a little bit. So we've drawn our subtraction rectangle, which gets rid of the shape information that was there. All right, so the information is still represented, but it just uses kind of like a Boolean operation to say, draw just this half, not this half. So let's add some layer styles to this. I'm going to double click on that layer. The first thing I want to do is add a gradient. And so we shifted it by about four degrees. So I'm going to make this uh, four degrees shy of 90, which is going to be 86. And it's kind of overpowering. Let me set that to overlay, perhaps. Uh, maybe normal will be fine. I'm just going to reduce the opacity. There we go. Cool. Now let's uh, let's add a drop shadow to this. And our global angle is by default set to 120 degrees. Let's make this something more like 30. So remember in our last tutorial we talked about the light being somewhere off in this vicinity shining over our Photoshop document in this direction. And that multiply is a little bit harsh, so I'm going to reduce the opacity just a bit on it. So that's to my liking, about 47% with a multiply. That's good. All right. So let's add an inner shadow. That's a little bit potent. So what I ultimately wanted to use this inner shadow for is to make it look like this part on the side is shadowed underneath this. Uh, and in order to do that, I'm going to have to tweak the angle a little bit. So turn off the use of global light and just kind of move this guy around until it's situated approximately where you want. That's good enough for me. And I'm going to reduce the opacity on that. Let's, let's even set that for color burn, a little bit less intense perhaps. And I'm going to spread this out just a little bit. So distance, I'll decrease it to maybe four pixels, but the size to eight. So it's more fuzzy in general. That's pretty good. Now let's add, uh, so we added our gradient already. All right, so that's a pretty good card. I'm satisfied with that. Let's go ahead and create a new layer, and this is going to be our grommet. So for this, I'm going to zoom up a little bit so that I can see what I'm doing in some more detail. And select a color that's, uh, that's gray and pretty light. So this is the color that I'll be using. 
and I'm going to use another vector using the ellipse tool and if you hold down shift while drawing it will constrain your your ellipse to a, a circle and I'm gonna make something oh, about 26 26 pixels 27 that's about right and using the path selection tool you can kinda of jiggle this around to where you want it I'm gonna stick it pretty close to the corner here and zoom up just a little bit more now with the vector information selected if you go back to your ellipse tool you should be able to click this now sometimes it happens that you have the layer selected but you can't click these that's because you haven't selected the vector information click that first and then these options become available and I'm just going to use the subtract tool and again while holding shift to constrain my circle to just being a circle as opposed to an ellipse I'm going to draw a smaller circle inside it let's make this one maybe 14 pixels and using the path selection tool I'm going to kind of drag it around to the middle so that looks pretty good to me let's zoom out and see how this looks alright so we've got it approximately where we want it now it makes sense that if you have a grommet and a card that this center part of the card is actually going to be punched out so let's do that very quickly just by selecting again the vector information from the grommet layer use the path selection tool and click on that little circle and then I'm going to copy and then click the vector information for the card layer right there and paste and because that was already set to subtract it automatically punches out of the card for us and so that shadow that you're seeing is part of the layer styles that are assigned to the card itself alright so now that we got the shape there let's go ahead and add some layer styles first thing I want to do is add a drop shadow to this guy we want it to be kinda of gentle because a grommet's not going to be sticking way up out of the top of this so clicking on the drop shadow I'm gonna set this to color burn a little bit different than a, a multiply but also reduce the opacity on that to maybe 40 something percent and also reduce the distance I'm gonna put it to about two pixels and reduce the size to maybe three so it's kinda of close and I'm gonna add an outer glow and instead of being bright like this you can make your glows dark and it's almost like getting a second kind of shadow out of your layer styles so I selected black as the color and blend mode I'm also gonna do color burn again and that's really really dark so let's reduce that to right about oh, maybe a little bit less that's alright by me cool and I'll just keep that as is so let's add a bevel and emboss effect to this. It's already looking like a grommet, isn't it? If we add a contour to this, I'm going to add a half round contour. Rather than being a, a sharp edge to the top of this, I want something that's kind of nice and rounded. And I'm going to reduce the screen effect just a tad, the uh, multiply just a little bit as well. And then lastly, uh, let's go ahead and add a, a satin effect. These are highly underutilized in Photoshop, but they're really powerful. You can get a lot of interesting bevel effects just by using the satin effect. I'm going to set the contour on this for the cone. And by jiggling the, uh, the distance and the size of this, we can get something that's pretty grommet-ish. I'm satisfied with that. So, in the second part of the tutorial we added this card, we added a little bit of shadowing to it, added some drop shadow behind it, as well as punching a hole in it and inserting a grommet. I'm Mr. Biotech and this has been another SkinYourScreen.com tutorial.